Hello, welcome to Top of the World. I should film the starting of this process, really. Now, there are a, a good majority of my subscribers, they're not interested in this. Like, they come for the machines and the snow plowing and the big stuff. And this is interesting. With the light that's coming through the windows behind me, it looks like I've got a halo. I definitely haven't. Anyway, it's cleared a bit now, you can see outside. We're still in the depths of winter. And uh, I'm ready to work on this wall behind me. So what I've done on this wall, so this is the wall we've just finished. This is where we're going to. I've taken off the skirting and all the trims around the windows. Right, as I found with every other window, you got all these nice big gaps. Letting freezing cold air in. And uh, I've machined all the trims, so I put these blinds up temporarily to try it there anyway, they didn't work. So we're going to tear those down. But the radiators. So in every room I've renovated so far, the radiators have come off, been flushed, and gone back on. And now I can't do this. I thought I could do this room without removing the radiators. I can't. So now I'm going to take these radiators off. I'm not sure whether that's a good idea or not. Anyway, it's what I've got to do. And this morning was so cold, we're in double minus digits overnight, I had to light the boiler. So now I've got to let the, the furnace, the boiler, go out and uh, turn off the water. Let's go down into the cellar. I'll give you an idea, I'll show you the three radiators in this room that have got to come off. So here we are in the furnace room. And uh, the furnace should be just about out. Yeah, okay. So for those of you who've been down there before, some of this will look familiar. And then of course we put this tank in, which all seemed like a really good idea. I think I could drain the system back through this tank and out of the overflow pipe there. I don't know, I don't know. Let's have a go see if we can crack these, these valves first. Don't feel very good. It don't feel very good at all. No. And that's really bad. I'm surprised uh, my old phone survived that. Right, we can't turn those off. So, hmm. I don't know where we're going to end up with all this. Well, these radiators were put on in the late 30s. So this is the first time these particular radiators have been off since the building was built. And it would appear I'm just not quite ready. So happy. There we go. Next one.
didn't press record. Anyway, so that's all three radiators off now and capped, the pipes are capped. It's not a project, to, I might do a little cheat here in the end. It's not a project I could have done, would have done, was even possible to do without that new tank we installed. So now the next job is to go back downstairs, fill the system up, relight the furnace. Smooth, real smooth. Okay. So there we go. There's that small RV 4.6 shower pump we installed months ago, running off the battery. I plugged it into the charger because it makes the pump go faster. We put in a very fine wire wall gauze into that. We filled the tank from the various containers we've got. Now the system is refilling. And this is exactly what this tank install and that pump install was designed to allow us to do. How do we know when the system's full? Well, we cut off this pipe that used to run to drain, didn't we? So when the system's full, water is going to run out the end of that. And that'll be our whole loop system. Full up and done. Uh, so I think I'm also about ready to relight the furnace, even though it's not full yet. We will have to go upstairs and check those bungs we put on the radiators. I have cut new rubbers to go in them, which I didn't show you. Right, well, let's carry on. That's doing its thing. This is going to do it soon. So that's the system full back up. And I know that because I've emptied everything I had. The boilers nicely alight and warming up. And the heating is warming up. And the system is full, and we know that because we have a completed circuit. So the pump is pumping out the bottom of this tank and the overflow is pouring into this tank. And the tank level somewhere here. So we're all good. So when I switch this pump off now, that'll stop flowing. There we go. It'll flow for a little while because there's an actual pressure in the system and then it'll just stop. Yeah, all good. So that took about two and a half hours to drain down the system into containers and that tank, which was full right up. And then, uh, and then we'll go and see what we achieved. There you go, that stopped. Oh, it's stopping. Radiator is off. And the heating is all back on. Funny, I had no leaks on that one at all. Right. But them other two, they leaked real bad. Yeah, I'm trying a bit of an experiment there. I would say that's not going well. Yeah. Anyway, we're good to go now. We can get on and uh, work on this wall. So, I'm going to bring you in at the start of the process. All good things start with a scribble. And this is my scribbling. I had to teach myself how to do that. I used to know how to do that. It's all to do with circles. 
So yeah, pelmets. I've been working on this one single piece, which is going to be my template for about an hour now. I'm working out my measurements and where I'm going with it and what I've machined up. And then I found uh, something quite rare, because usually most of them get used. It was six metres long, which, how come, which is how I know that I cut it, because that's my maximum length. Anyway, I've now cut them into um, the required lengths. So I've got these three boards here. These are going to be the pelmet faces and the returns. I've got some lids and bits and pieces and various moulds that I've made up this morning. And uh, I'm going to do the... I'm always torn whenever I'm doing a project for myself. Architecture. Architecture is a fascinating thing. And I, I, I'm, I was brought up around fascinating architecture. All my life, I've been around interesting and fascinating architecture. Old London, New London, uh, big mansions, country houses. Um, and I like a lot of different things. But I have two specific styles. Gothic, Jacobean. They're the two styles I like most of all. If I was to choose, I would have a huge Jacobean mansion... 70, 80 room style mansion in Jacobean style on a huge lake. Yeah, somewhere in Canada. Not sure. Anyway, uh, off, off track there. Um, so I'm kind of mixing Gothic and Jacobean in this one room that I'm doing and I need to make pelmets for these three windows. But because that wall's busy, they can't be ordinary pelmets. So this is a very quick process without boring you. I'm just showing you the starting of the process of the Gothic style, not Jacobean, but the Gothic style pelmets that I'm going to build for that room. And this is where it starts. It starts with a template, some tooling, and an idea. And this is kind of the idea. I'm not quite sure if we can go this elaborate. If I had uh, a few weeks to sit and carve, then maybe, but... So we might be doing away with that and ending up with a large Gothic-style pelmet. And I, when I say large, this is just the face, so, you know, we're coming out. It's going to be... They're going to be big, is what I'm saying. Now I'm making a half jig. So this is half a pelmet and the return. And in order to do that, I, may, may, I need to make up a single jig. So I've made out a piece of MDF. I've marked all these out. Then I'm gonna screw this over each one of these and route with a hole. And these are slightly smaller than they'll appear because I wanna put a mold or a bevel on the edge. So next job is to screw this onto each one of those and route with this out. And that gives me half a jig, half a face. So that means then I'll only have to apply this to the board six times, as opposed to 36 times, right. So make one of those and then make half a jig and I go from having to screw this on 36 times to only having to put this on six times. It'll make sense as we go along. Some considerable time later. There we go. So all this is, is a router template. That's all it is. So now what I'll do is I'll clean all this up, make sure the edges are all straight, take out any nicks, because the router's gonna roll around the inside of these. And uh, that's one half of a part of a template. So I'm about eight hours into this now. So we've got those, and then we've turned those into my test piece from my drawing. You have to ignore the holes in the bottom of that because I was using something else. So what have I got? Well, I've got this.
this is my jig and then I've I've tried out different chamfers I think I'm gonna go with this it's the one I like the most um, that was an experiment didn't that didn't didn't go well and I think I'm there so now it's really time for me to go and get one of the actual pelmets and um, screw my jig board on and give it a go. All right, so I've taken the pelmet face. This is the pelmet face. And um, I've made a line on the pelmet face for the center line and I've lined up my center line with my jig on the pelmet face, screwed that down. And I'm doing the face of the palmet and I'm doing the return at the same time. So there'll be a mitre here. This is for the return. Where it's going to sit up against the wall. And I'll router out all these in rough first. And do everything that I need to on this jig. And then I'll turn this jig over. And I'll do that side. And we'll repeat that six times. Three palmets. And that'll put everything into the palmet we need and then we can start doing our profiles and our carving and everything else. And then once we've done that, and our permit face is complete, and then we can start building up into our elaborate design. So these are all even except the ones at the end, because this is the return and now I'm going to do the other two, just like that. So that's the equivalent of uh, roughing something out. Now uh, we'll start with the detail. Well, that's day two. Two very long days to get them to that point. So that's just the basis of where we start now. We've uh, put ovlos on the bottom, both sides, to get it uh, where the wood split here. I've glued and clamped that. Um, there's a lot of sanding and cleaning up to do. And then we can cut them. Join them together and then I can start to build them up. But that's the basis for where we're going. So I've got the first stage done. They're cut with the reveals and they've got their hats on. So now I'm going to put the dental moulding on here and then when that's on I can turn them over and start doing the cornice in detail. Quite cool I think you'll agree. Yeah. Right. Now that's what I'm talking about. There. As I'm sure it was quite difficult to imagine somewhere along the line. Where's my door in? There's my door in. To get those bits down underneath there. But anyway, go from that to that. Now they're all glued and braced. Uh, I can't do anything with them till the morning now. But uh, yeah, I've lost track of how many days I've been on these now. But I think I've got one more left. I think tomorrow I can clean them up, stain them, and then we can get back up and on the wall. Yeah, spectacular, I'm sure you'll agree. I'm working on the first cleanup job and um, I can see some router marks in the bottom of here. Now, these ones I've done by hand so that it, it looks like it should look. But in the bottom there, you can actually, in a couple of them, 
you can actually see machine marks. So marks done by hand. Uh, this is acceptable. Machine marks, there's a good example. Machine marks, not acceptable. So I've got a double-edged, no, well, I've got an issue here. I get out my little metal and valve grinding thing and I've got a, a pad. I don't have anything to get in that on. So I'm going to glue that to a bit of sandpaper, cut round it and then put a, a threaded end on it. All right, this will allow me to get in there and finally sand out the machine marks, I'm hoping. But before I can make this, I have to repair the scissors. It's just honestly, it's one of those days. Well, let's see if that works. Yeah, it seems to work better. I can get in there and sand it now. Hmm. How are we doing? Well, at least taking a long time. Come in. But my word, we've been on it all day. Just over two hours to do one of those. And um, it's a good opportunity for those of you that find it difficult to understand what six or seven months of winter looks like. And today's the 6th of April. And that's normal. Anyway, we're not snow plowers today. We're staying in. I don't have an end on it, that one, because it's going up to the wall. It's making it twist a bit. I need to get it installed. It's got a slight twist on it. Anyway, yeah, I like it. The advantage of um, the advantage of these ones is they're up quite high, so that's uh, the end of another day. The days just go anyway. So tomorrow, my plan is is to finish the wall in underneath. Still snowing, right? So I've now finished the underneath where the radiators were, and. Uh, I've put on the brackets, 
to hang them onto the walls. I've also put on all the curtain roll poles. <coughs> all three sets of curtain poles. This is 15 mil copper pipe spray black. And I fashioned some brackets and I've got these round clips that clip and hold onto the curtains. So, still haven't spent any money. Awful lot of time. All right, so the next job is to fill all the pinholes and any mitres that are not completely correct and uh, clean this lot up and then stain and then get these up on the wall. I've got to stain them before I put them up because they come down to the top of the architrave. That's the next job. And then we can start cladding the rest of the wall. I know what I was going to show. We can, <coughs> we can use this as an example. Right. So what I was talking about, probably only a few seconds ago, so we're cutting the wall in into the trim because if you used to put the trims on afterwards, you would get all these horrible gaps. So the only way you can use all these moulds and not get lots of these horrible gaps is to cut the wall in, in against the architrave and not put the architrave on top of the trim. So I'm going in and I'm filling my pinholes and everything and I'm standing here obviously in front of these huge windows. This is what a weather forecast that says no snow looks like. So that's snow snow today, a lot of heavy snow tomorrow. It's cool though, what a place to work. Look at that. So yeah, I did plough the road. So it's a completely different day today. It's the first time I filmed today, still snowing. Uh, right, I've sanded down, filled, and stained all the window trims. Now it's time to put the pelmets up. The wall underneath finished. And uh, the surrounds are all stained. Next thing to do is to put the pelmets. There's those two out there. And there's this end one down there. And then the trusty old scaffolding we're gonna clean off and get that into place. And, Pop them up. Have I done any snow ploughing? No. The road, it's just gone. You can see where it was. It's just not there anymore. April. Lovely. Huh, let's pop these pelmets up. So am I mad? Am I completely mad? Or am I genius? I could have made them bigger. I could have made them a lot bigger. The reason is, this room, I mean, bearing in mind this is now only a quarter of its actual size, right? The rest is all bedrooms. It is still a vast room. There we go. And that's what I was looking for. And the radiators have got to be painted, got to go on, and now I've got to finish the wall in. But that's what I was looking for. It's hard to kind of see, really. Anyway, I've got the curtain rails in ready. Yeah, 
I'm into that. Right, let's see how far we can get on with the wall in. I'm struggling with the light in here one way or another. Okay, so you'll see how when I described having to put the toe groove up against the trim, if the if this trim had sat on this, there would have been gaps everywhere. So you have to cut it in between. That's kind of what I was saying. And all of these have to be pre-painted as everything had to be pre-painted because if you touch like that there, oh, where's my rag? If you touch a pre-stained piece of wood, there we go, then you'll get overstain marks and they'll stay. Anyway, this is where I am. Now, the thing about this, it's better light if I stand this way, lighting. I've got two options and I might do both options. The first option is to light from within inside the pelmets. Yeah. Put lights inside the pelmets to light up this wonderful ceiling. Right. But also in between the pelmets, I add in my head, here we go. I add in my head some big kind of industrial iron black firing flames. So before I go too high on the wall in, I've got to run first fix electrics and I don't know how far down the wall I've got to come. So before I do that tomorrow morning, I've got to start digging in my sheds of stuff um, and see what I've got. And then maybe get the welder out and yeah. I think it should have two lights between each one of these, the three windows and lighting in the pelmet. So we're calling the video there. There's the lovely pelmets, all in a row. I'm gonna carry the wall in up, but there's no point in me going too far because I'm not sure where I've got to put first fix electrics in. And I've also got to get outside and plow. So thanks for watching. I hope it wasn't too boring for those that are you not really into this, but you can see the result that's two weeks I've been on this wall and I'm still not finished. Um, and, and that's why I wanted to do that wall busy and different. And that's why I've gone for the vertical here. Now the radiators obviously are not going back silver. They'll be going back as something else. But that's, the light is just awful. Oh, oh, look at that. That's why I've gone vertical here, horizontal there. And, and that was a goal all the way up and then we'll put some, some big old lights. But I would consider that a complete success for this size of the room. And then that just leaves me the last wall to do because this wall is finished I'm going to do something more with the door these trims are coming back off so I'm going to do Jacobean door posts on this door we have this huge corner up here which I may have to get the chainsaw out for I might have to carve something I'm not quite sure what I'm doing there hmm it could do with a hmm I don't know anyway and I've got a make something to go over those bolts. Anyway, that nah, sorry. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. If you're not, really helps the channel out. Thanks all for watching. Catch you on the next one. Bye for now.